All right. Well, hi, guys. Here we are, January. Oh, we're almost at the end of our master class. And so we're going to really like in these the in this month with a bang because oh my gosh the inner work that i have been doing this last month has been i don't know i don't know if it's any bigger or better than what i've always done but i think i'm just i think i'm just more in my body and i'm more aware of you know i'm just you know i become more aware of that every time we do work so it's it feels exciting um this new year is going to have so much amazing potential for all of us and again that's really going to just depend on what side of the coin you're looking on right um so those of you guys who like watch this later on youtube these will be the last two classes that we put on youtube for the master class because next year there's going to be a lot of top secret stuff that i'm not thinking that people want to just bump into on the internet because we're going to be digging into more of the the underbelly of, of, of creation, right? Because again, you know, when we're, we're so quick to say good and evil, really what it is, is it's life and death and it's two sides of a coin. So, you know, the, the second that God decides to experience itself in physical reality of any, any sort, it, there has to be a, 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 a dualistic side of it in order to re, recreate and expand because there has, to, in order to expand and grow there has to be a death experience so the spirit of death is created for expansion okay and hopefully at the end of this class this will really make sense because as humans we are constantly looking at the world as positive or negative and those are just two charges that are both required to make anything work okay like that's like in order to make anything work, as far as manifestation, you're going to need two different charges. And so whenever there is as above, there is a below. And it's almost like as long as there is going to be some sort of physical reality, then there is going to be on some level of duality. There's going to be some level of duality. Okay, so like the last couple of classes that I've been teaching, I've been kind of talking to you guys about this gender idea and getting back into your holistic nature so that you could create as you were designed to create. Okay. So when you are not in that dualistic nature within yourself, it's going to be more difficult for you to create. Now, when you are in that non, if you are in that non-dualistic self within yourself, that's not aligned, which means it's almost like you can't drive your car with two positives or two negatives okay it's not going to work so we understand that as like like an energetic mechanism to create flow but we don't really notice that we are we actually become a battery when we are cut off from what we would describe source energy so in this class it's really bright let me actually pause this recording for a second Okay, so the way that we're going to be like looking, especially for January, for those of you guys who are going to be continuing on with this masterclass idea, and let me know if for some reason you don't hear me or something because this mic is tricky, is we're really going to be working with non-dualistic perspectives by you. It's like we're not judging one that is bad or good. We're like, which one are we using here? You know, because in order for you to become the version of yourself that you were born to become, the old version has to die. Is that bad? Like, is that bad? Is that bad? Well, it depends on who you're asking. You know, if you ask your 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 ego who has built its entire, you know, personality off of who you are, well, then part of you might see that as a negative. But ultimately, if you're looking at yourself big picture, which I highly recommend that that's going to be your viewpoint this year, is do not look at yourself here. Look at yourself from here because there are there are going to be a there's going to be strategy, major strategy to move in and shift with this new energy. Because yes, this new earth is collective unity consciousness. The old earth is collective separation consciousness. 
that's really the only difference. You know, and we're looking at, oh my God, it's so disgusting and it's evil. Blah, blah, blah. It literally is the, it is the opposite side of love doing its thing. Because do you know the true definition of love? The true definition of love is energy. Okay. Energy. So now let's look at the word emotion, energy in motion. So could we say that death has a personality? Life has a personality. So one of the things that we're going to be studying this year in this masterclass is we're going to be studying the personality elements of what love, the, the opposite side of love is, which is still love of death. Okay. So let's say everybody out there who is, who has lost their humanity. Okay. And they don't have enough electromagnetic energy to create a feeling of love and vitality. Okay. So they're, they're more in their destructive desires, still desires. So if you guys have ever listened to any interviews on like serial killers and, and really like people in life, they love it. Love, 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 love what they do. Okay. So the thing is, is we have to understand is that love is not light and information and heaven and angels and babies and puppies. Love is energy. Okay. And energy can be focused on expanding and growing. And love can be focused on death and destruction. Okay, because it goes both ways and it is equally, equally as strong. Okay, now love in its truest element of what you would consider expansion or life. Okay, it is on a constant grow, constant grow. It's always growing into something new something more something it's like one flower turns into prairies okay like that's what the the love of expansion is now the love of destruction is death that creates 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 death now you'll notice that only if it gets completely aberrated does it remain in that one element? Because what usually has to happen is that they kind of have to continue to meet up in the middle if they want to be something new or different, right? So it's almost like I'm going to have to take some elements out of life and mix it with death if I'm going to ever have something new. Now, if I want to keep manufacturing the same product then it's just going to grow red roses all the way through okay it's going to go through its death hibernation cycle but it's not necessarily going to change its form unless it is mixed with the, its own opposition to become something more so that's what i'm saying is, is is the the greatest gift that i can give you guys at the end of this year is to let you know that the way that you're going to be get be able to get off this planet and get on the next planet, which is literally a metaphor because you're not really going anywhere. This is all actually happening inside of you. Okay. Is to understand that you can have, you cannot have any resistance, none. Full acceptance is required of both earths in order to choose. Because you do not have neutral zero point energy when there is resistance. When there is resistance, your factors of choice are coming through that resistance. And so your factor, your choice will be based on the resistance. Well, resistance is usually blocked, stuck energy. So then you're going to manifest what planet you jump onto through that particular perspective, sorry, and it's not going to be the one you want. So by me helping you guys really look at 
everything that you would consider you hate or everything that you consider that you repel or anything that you just actually feel like you are are not you're actually in love with it and the way that you can actually bend those things towards growth and philosophy and abundance and prosperity from lack and poverty and scarcity is that you accept that you love it okay so trust me i'm gonna get deeper into this so one of the things that I have been experiencing towards the end of this year, as I've been working more on going going back to like my Kundalini experience, because the, the download that I got about two weeks ago was that everybody who chooses the new earth, their Kundalini will go through its experience in the next two to three years, like full blown, which to me is, is your Christ in nature, because that's when you're, you're your um the oil in your spine goes all the way up to your pineal gland and ding 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 right and now you're crested so that's where we're that's what will happen to you if you are working towards this new ultimate plane now i truly believe that that it is although it's going to feel very like this choice or that choice because we have free will well let's say i've only done enough work to get to this choice you see what i mean so there will be like, there will be like pseudo places where people will still experience this and that, but they won't be abundant in this or that. They'll be in more of a, like, like I call it middle earth or something. They'll be in this like kind of growing place where they won't be living true abundance and prosperity, but they won't be living in hell. Okay. But they would be aware of both. So for you guys to go, I'm done with this one. I'm going all the way. That would be the body matches earth because earth is ascending very quickly. And so like attracts like. But she's also, she's so multidimensional that literally every parallel experience of that or that will also be happening here. Okay, so you're, you, you know, you'd be like, oh, at the end of the year, I thought it was going to be just all love and light. Well, then that just means that you haven't ascended to that space yet. It doesn't mean that you couldn't do that tomorrow if you put your intention there. But most humans are still believing in lack. They're still believing in scarcity. And whatever you believe in, you are investing in. You are, you are flowing energy towards whether you know you believe it or not so i looked up all of the words that represent love okay like respect admire um i wrote them down uh nurture invest protect allow submit um dominate is even a form of love and if you think about it the exact same things that we do for those that we love we do for the things that we call we hate, okay? Because there's one thing about negative things that happen in your world is you're actually flowing a lot more energy to those things than you know, okay? So like where your biggest lack point is in your body gets 80% of your energy. And it is because it is the vibration of love of death so when you're looking at lack you're looking at it through the love of death whether you whether the conscious part of you like enjoys that experience or not that is what is happening because there is only love you are only love but what happens is we get stuck thinking that it's life or death and we get stuck running away from death we get stuck running away from loss we get stuck trying to find love right but we don't realize is that the very thing that we are giving our energy to is love because all i am is love so anywhere i put my energy is love but if i i if i put it in abundance right then i'm going to be flowing energy towards abundance but it's everything is abundance so now it's like we've got two two issues there's nothing else but abundance and there's nothing else but love so now I get an abundance of lack. 
okay? Because I'm noticing lack. I'm feeling the lack. Or I have an abundance of pain because now I'm noticing the pain. I have abundance of scarcity because I'm noticing it. So the thing is, is love, light, death, destruction is everywhere, depending on where you are looking. Okay, so what I have been led to do for this new class this year is to get your kundalinis activated, like right off the bat. Like that's what I've been told to do with this class. Had no idea that's what we were going to be doing, but that's like one of the first things. Now, now again, not all of you are going to be doing it at the same time. And you don't have to do it this year if you don't want, but you need to know how it happens. Okay, because it is it is a chosen experience. You have to choose your own salvation here. And I highly recommend that if you actually go through the process of activating your full kundalini is that you are also doing inner work, weeding and seeding. Okay, because I don't want, I, I don't recommend what happened to me 12 years ago happened to you with all that baggage. Okay, it was not fun to have your filters blown and have all these spiritual gifts and also have a big fat ego with lots of childhood trauma sitting there. Not recommend. Okay. So, but I know that that is also something that a lot of you are ready to experience and think and believe that if you had that experience, your life would be easier. To me, it's, it's just that is go getting your Kundalini fully activated is going to be, make you a vibrational match for the new earth because that's her Kundalini. Okay. And, and, and if, if it's like, oh shoot, I missed my window because there is going to be a place where it can actually like, there's a sweet spot in this year for you. If you do miss that window, it's okay because it just means that you're going to catch it. Trust me. You're going to be ready when it happens. So if I were going to do this, my time would not be until December of 2024. And I might do it again. So see what else happens. Who knows? Maybe I'll bust in the light. I doubt it, but who knows, right? Either way, I'm fine. So what I want to really bring home in these last couple of sessions, whether you're joining joining me or not for this, is like when I got the download, like we're doing the superhuman thing because as Earth expands and she um, she vibrates at a higher frequency, you're not going to be able to live on her in the new Earth if you're not superhuman because that's who she is. Like attracts like. So you'll find yourself on some middle plane or you'll find yourself like, and again, I don't think any of us that watch these videos or find me or find anyone like me are going to be on the old earth because they're going to, they're about to be turning into AI. Like their souls are, are basically being like willingly given up to, to them. And then they, there will be no more Christ consciousness because as soon as the, as soon as the host, as soon as your blood is no longer there. Okay there is no more Christ consciousness. So they want the soul and because the soul is the subconscious program that they can program anything they want to it, which they've done to us. And, and they want, they want the genetics which they've been collecting for thousands of years now, which they have, and they're going to make their own antichrist AI being right? Well, it's not going to be, it's going to, so, and that's going to be what's happening over there. And so that's why you're hearing about all this crazy stuff and you're thinking, what's happening in the world? It's literally just like, if you look at it, it's just like, oh, in this state, they're doing that. In this state, they're doing that. Like, that's the way that I would hope that you would see creation because it's a way for them to create without create, without the ability to create. Okay. So it's like, like I think I was saying it in one of the other classes. It says some people are born with vision and some people are born with abundance. Okay, like what would you prefer? Vision or money right off the bat? Well, that's what they have. They don't have vision. So what they're doing is, is they're copycatting off of the vision of creation and then they're going to make their own battery operated perspective of that. But it will utilize a, a different source than what we have to offer here okay and there's also no threat to their society but that's you here's the thing it's just like saying you know what like if the whole planet became homosexual um there would be no more life okay so and it, again that is one of the things that they move for towards people to is sexual aberration so that will it will long-term affect 
fertility. But that's that's their game. What I'm talking about is our game. But one of the things that you guys are going to learn this year is that in order for you to know the the game you want to go, you you really have to know the rules of both sides because they are both using the same formula. Like I'm telling you that the the spirit of death is using scripture. Bottom line, I know exactly which ones they're using now too, because there is creation formulas. There is creation formulas. And again, they're having to utilize the container of our source to fuel their empire, okay, which basically is still Rome that became the Catholic Church that is still there. And that's been working its way up into these times. But it's just a shift of perspective because the thing is, is what I'm going to be doing in the fellowship today is I'm going to be giving you guys another alchemy training on the spirit of death and spirit of life inside of your bodies. Because remember, one of the things that empaths and sensitive beings and extrasensory humans have been really good at in this timeline is not being in their bodies. Okay. Especially when there's a lot of emotion trapped. Remember, energy and motion. And the only only energy that gets trapped in your body is negative emotion. Positive emotion doesn't get trapped in your body because it's flow. Remember, it's 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 expansion, it's growth, right? Spirit of debt can get trapped into your body. And emotion left unattended begins to have its own personality because it attracts more of the spirit of death. So that's why an injury that it's not dealt with, it will create other energies because death can multiply too, right? Or the concept of something that is having a death experience because it's like a perpetual death experience with the with love as the energy of it, okay? And so I know you guys have had this thought because I've had this thought, especially as a mother, when I think about some of the things that these people do, that they seem to love. Like, how could they love that, right? But that's that's the energy that they are vibrating at. So if they didn't love what they were doing, they wouldn't be able to do it. Because what energizes them is the love of it, okay? Because I think that one of the things that's happened, especially in English language, since it was actually written by the occult, this language is to constantly entrap us with not believing what what words mean. But when you really look up the definition of all of the words, especially that mean love, I could use it in a dark context just like that. And anything that you have in abundance of, you love. You just don't know you do. Okay. Anything that you are, uh, that you have that is in the vibration of lack or suffering, you are addicted to because it's still there. And if you, which was creator, did not love that, you wouldn't keep creating that. So what you actually love is the lack of it. All right. So I did this like last week. And it, this is something we're going to do in the fellowship later because it's going to be body work. But I actually like asked my body, where did I love being married? Because, you know, that's on my list of things I'd like to experience as a human is a good marriage. Like, like what Donna's got, you know? So I was like, okay, I'd like to experience that. Okay. Let me find out where I, where I love that I, that I'm not. Okay. And I found it so damn fast in my body. And I was like, oh, right here. I, I am the love of not having because you don't realize is that you love not having where you would have it because anywhere there's love is what you are experiencing. Your job is to look at the definitions. You see, this is what happens in the subconscious mind when we are programmed with language, right? Like I said, if you have 
daddy issues, you have issues with God because that's your father. And the subconscious doesn't know the difference. All right, because it's not like judging, well, what do you mean by that when you say that or when you think that or when you feel that? It just is. So if you don't have something, it is because you love it, right? And you're flowing energy, life force energy to creating more scarcity, more suffering, more lack. So you might have to ask yourself, and you probably will if you're in fellowship, is where where do I love not having money? Where is that in my body? Oh, hello. Okay. Now, if you've been doing the opposite work and affirming that you do love money and you do that you do that you are wealthy and abundant, well, then you can also find where you do love money in your body. So now what you'll probably notice what's happening in your life is nothing. So if you have a frequency of I love having money and I love not having money, well, what you're probably manifesting is nothing <laughs> or drought. Because that is an opposition, okay, that cancels each other out. So what we would want to do is we would want to change our mind. Do you know the first, first words out of Jesus' mouth in the Bible? The first words he spoke. Not everybody else, but his first words. Repent. Change your freaking mind. Change your mind. But see, you don't know that you love not having money. You don't know that you love it, this relationship that hurts you. Because the thing is, is your definite, definition of love in your conscious awareness is completely different than what your subconscious mind understands love as. Subconscious mind sees love as currency, as energy source, as electricity. That's what's feeding the lamp. That's what's feeding the toaster. And you use the toaster every day. Do you notice lack every day? Then you're feeding the toaster your currency by noticing it. Okay. And this is why Neville and all these teachers have, you know, persist on not giving any energy to the lack. But that is not, and I think hopefully after this class, you might have an aha moment of, it's not that you are in your human definition or your conscious definition, loving the lack of it, but one part of you does. And if it's consistent and chronic, it's more than one part, right? So when I asked myself, okay, good. I, I found where, where I love not being married in my body, which was interesting because it was in my coccyx, right? Right there. Okay, well, what chakra is that? That's the root. What did I witness as a child? My mom went through six husbands. So part of me is like, ooh, I'm better off, right? So you have to look at the perspective of why I wouldn't want something, okay? Why would I not want something that I saw my mom have a lot of that never worked? Well, there you go, okay? And, and so again, even though the vow I made or the the pursuit of happiness I created doesn't feel that way about marriage. As a matter of fact, I've seen lots of my clients now have amazing marriages. So I have seen and I have witnessed that the other side of that spectrum exists. Does my body know that? Right? Does, does this primitive primal nature thing that's on an autopilot that's running old programs from zero to seven know that? So my body or my soul or my subconscious, whatever you want to call it, loves the fact that I don't have to experience that. So you see where I'm going with this is it's kind of like we can't keep being so stuck in our story, in our body, in our definitions. And Bashar, who is one of my favorite channels, and I actually have channeled his energy before, is he he talks about your belief systems are your definitions. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Sorry. We have snowy roads. My daughter just want to make sure I'm home safe. <laughs> like I've been home for an hour. I forgot to, forgot to check in. But she loves to be worried. See? Loves to be worried. This is why it's so hard for you guys to stop worrying. Because there is a part of you that loves it loves 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 it part of you that loves to be afraid 
Your job is to find out why. And then probably want to do what I did and look up all the definitions of love and see which ones that actually go with why you love not having it. Okay? Because here's the thing. Everything I look at consistently, I'm investing in. I'm investing because I'm putting my energy there. Anytime you put your energy anywhere, you're investing your currency. And the more you put energy into something, the more you build an actual physical presence out of it. Because that's what manifestation is, is this long-term focus on something. Doesn't mean what it is. So if I look at lack enough, lack becomes a part of me. Okay. And whether I like it or, or not in my conscious awareness, my subconscious just sees energy and motion, emotion, all of it as love. And I'm going to tell you, that is actually the only thing that exists in the universe is love. It is the currency of source energy. And it is, it, it's either in a life experience or death experience, but it is still spirit. That's why there's a spirit of death and there's a spirit of life. And so if you are not creating the spirit of life and growth and expansion and constantly shedding your old skin and becoming more, then you are also focused on the spirit of death. So as you're trying to grow, you're dying. And you might love both. But you're going to have to get really clear on where and what you put your energy to because... I'm not going to get into what I got into last week because this is going to be about you and your creation. But where do you want to put that love? Okay. And I've got some tricks because if you go, oh my gosh, I must love lack. I must love disease. I must love poverty. I must love arguing. I bet you if you actually sat with, why would I, questions are amazing. Why would I love something? Why would I keep doing something? Okay. And that's a great question to ask yourself. Why would I love? Okay. I get why I wouldn't want to be married now if I look at it through my subconscious's perspective. Okay, great. So see, now I know what new belief systems to create. Now I know where to weed and seed. But before I might not have known where to weed and seed. And I might have just been like, what am I doing wrong? I'm affirming. I'm hypnotizing. Right. And then I've got such a strong early childhood story. And then I've got such a strong self-concept that I'm building right now. Well, now I'm just I'm neutralizing it. Okay. Or I I the partner that I had a conversation with the other day says, I love not being married. Literally spoke those words to me. And I was like, What? Right? Loves it. I thought, okay, well, I must love it too, or we wouldn't be having this conversation. See, the thing is, is like, one of the things you could say to yourself right now is, I must love this. Right there, that takes the resistance off of it. I must love it. I must love this for some reason. I must love suffering. I must love complaining. I must love hurting. Okay? And it's not even a matter of why. You can, you can go into the why for sure. But you just that right there opens up the flow. Because the thing that really causes the most resistance in our forward motion is almost like unidentified energy, which means you don't know you're putting all this money into this like company that is just slowly dying. You think you're putting all of your energy into that what you want, but where you're really investing is in the lack. Because think about it, like when you have something that you love, how often do you think about it? How, like you wanted that pair of shoes, you got that pair of shoes. Like Donna just got a giant rock on her finger and I bet she is absolutely obsessed with it. But give her a few months, right? She will not be obsessed with it. You're only obsessed with that which you want or that which you just got. That which you've had, you're like, yeah. And someone's like, oh my gosh, which is how she felt when she first got it. But give her three months. She'll be like, oh, I know, isn't it amazing? And she'll actually be able to relive that joy through someone seeing it for the first time. But she won't see it for the first time again until someone else sees it for the first time. You see? So it's like your experiences are going to be so much more charge of love on what you don't have yet or what you have just got. This is why 
all of these Imagineering teachers go, don't go to right when you get it. Don't go to the engagement. Don't go to the pile of money. Go where you've had it for a while. Go where you've lived it for a while. Because that is the energy of, well, what else do I want now? Right. So Donna's like, I got this rock on it. What else can I get? What else can I create? See, that's creation. Okay. So when we're chasing life, we're actually loving death. Chasing money or chasing, I got like the obsession, the hit. I need the hit. I need the hit. Or I need that. I need that. That's the love of lack. And we have to just say, okay, I must love this. I must love suffering. Okay. Why would I love suffering? What definition have I seen? Well, I loved my mom and she suffered. Bingo. Okay. I loved my dad and he suffered. That's how I demonstrate love. Because children model source energy off of what they observe, practice, experience. Not what they choose. Children do not build their belief systems from choice. They build belief systems from witnessing, practicing, experiencing. So, well, I love, which means I flow my energy to. That's your new definition of love. Where do I flow energy to? That's your definition of love forever. Well, if I'm floating my energy to looking at this bank account and then I'm feeling bad, we'll see now. And so it's like, you hear this all the time. Oh, what you chase runs away from you. I'm not chasing money. I'm just noticing that it's not there and I'm, I'm feeling good, but I'm over here, but I still don't have it. So if you still don't have it, it is because you love not having it. Because when you ask, it's given. And you guys, like, I'm still, like, I'm teaching you this, like, haha, I'm still trying to get this myself. So I don't have anything over you yet. I'm still downloading it. It's still, like, percolating. I've done this practice a few times. And I've actually had some really big charge blow because it's frustrating AF when you are literally doing everything by the book as far as creating this new you, but you don't understand that your subconscious looks at love, which is what you are, as currency of energy, okay? And see, this is why I'm saying is, is, is even when you look at the icky things that are happening over there to discern that's not who you are, you still looked at it. So you still actually invested in it. Any what that gets your currency of energy is an investment. Any energy you put out is an investment okay and so you've got to look at yourself as an investor now what have you invested over in your lifetime okay because of the way that law of attraction works we got it we got to kind of look at the laws of the universe here when we're playing this virtual reality game we have to comply like we don't have to believe in gravity if we don't want Okay, at some point, we don't even have to believe in time and space. But in order for you to truly understand what it means to be a creator, then there is different operating systems in density. Okay, so law of polarity, right? That's where your gender is going to be really solidly important. Law of resistance, what you resist persists. It's the Chinese handcuffs. Law of attraction, like attracts like. Okay, and then all the other ones correspondence, right? And so you see that this is what the occult uses to manifest without source energy. They use the laws of the universe. They use the scripture to manifest without source. Guess what? We're the source. They get us to follow the laws of creation for them. They get us to love lack. They get us to love the breadcrumb. They get us to obsess about what we don't have. They get us to get really scared about what we're seeing. Energy is energy. One thing I learned when I was really studying conscious parenting was that children are here for attention. They want to be seen. I'm here in all my glory. And they do not care if it's negative or positive attention. 
because they are still living in that non-dualistic place, right? And guess who gets the most attention? The squeaky wheel, the problem child, okay? And then I'm looking at that, that must be my parents' favorite. Wow. So my younger brother would hold his breath. That was his tantrum. He would like threaten my mom with, I'm going to kill myself if you don't give me what I want. That's what he would do. And I would just look at that like, oh my gosh. Like she would just drop everything she was doing and run over there and be like, please don't die. Please don't leave me. And he was literally like milking that. And I was like, wow, Peter, I just did the dishes. I did 12 things. Nobody even noticed. Right. But I didn't get beat up. So that's cool. Right. So when you're looking at this as a child, you, you have to understand that the way that you see the world is not the way your subconscious mind sees the world. And I think that this is going to be freedom for you because you have to like, look at this, like, why would I, if you, if I said, yep, you love it, you love being sick. You have to be like, why do I love being sick? And then you could literally now look over your storyboard from more of a metaphorical experience and be like, what did I see? What did I witness? What do I experience? That the very thing that I I am, I don't want. Do you know the most vulnerable emotion is joy? Do you know that joy is your natural state of being? Do you know when you were the most abused, attacked, and judged was in joy? And this is why you are afraid to feel joy for too long. The next time you're in joy, do something for me. Start your start your clock, your timer. And let forget it. Don't look at it. And notice how long you can keep that presence of pure joy before a thought or something stops the joy. Okay? Because you we have one of the things that, about epigenetics that's so cool and just so wrong at the same time is that we have genetics over thousands of years of suffering. So it's not just this collective, you know, like you go back to the caveman days and they learned very early on that you don't turn your back. Don't ever be too happy. The other shoe's going to drop. The rug's going to get pulled out from our, you have that Gino in your body. You have that in your biology. So what happens is because that's in your human suit and you are in a state of joy, that's the genetic that's going to get triggered. And all of a sudden you're going to get attacked for being too joyful. Like you're like, you're that, you know, that squeak that children get that is just like bliss. And it's like, just wants to just like nails on a chalkboard. Some people are so miserable that that creates rage in them i don't know the dynamic of you what happened in your family but i can tell you that joy was where you learned how to not want money joy was where you learned to not want to be married right because it was the joy that was taken from you okay and like okay so let's say i want to be married well what does marriage mean to my subconscious mind never joyful never having money always having to run away always fighting that's what the subconscious thinks and then i'm thinking well i watch the disney movies and i you know i know i know what i choose but what i actually love so the only thing you're experiencing right now is what you love that's it everything everything that is in your world right now is because you love it. So all you have to do is change your definition, okay? Which means that you have to understand and accept like, okay, I must love that. That right there, that's gonna just change your biology because acceptance, acceptance cuts the cord of ownership, right? So like if you play with the little Chinese handcuffs, as soon as you go towards it, you can get free. But if I'm constantly pulling, no, I'm abundant. No, I'm abundant. I'm abundant in, in money. And your subconscious mind's like, no, money is scary. People are going to take it from you. Okay. Remember when your mom had that money and she lost it? Remember, blah, 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 blah. You're going to have to pay more taxes. Everybody's going to see you. They're going to come after you. I mean, I don't know what your story is. So you're going to have to be like, why would I love not having money? And it could be 
a genetic. I mean, we also have so many thousands of years of religious wars that some of us signed contracts that we would literally live in poverty for our, for our gods. Who knows? It might not even be your story activated, but it is where you are investing your money, your energy. You are investing it there. And it might just be because of resistance. It doesn't necessarily mean that I really like actually enjoy it, but a part of you does. Because here's the thing, there's a spirit of life and there's a spirit of death. And when I have emotions of loss in my body that is going to attract the spirit of death inside of me and it's going to think and feel and desire and eat like attracts like so this whole last year was about kind of like deprogramming the soul which deprograms the body all right because the body is the manifestation of the soul the spirit is what uses that host to be aware and decide and discern and choose and all those wonderful things but the body is operated off of the soul. And that's why both of them are hijacked until you take it back. So as you start to change your soul programs, your subconscious belief systems, your definitions, you also are changing your biology. But at this point, it's not just about mindful affirmations. It's about, okay, I keep manifesting this. I must love this. What do I love about it? You can do body work. You can just like think about it mentally. But I bet you if you actually looked at love, not from like yay or nay, you looked at it from just focus, investment, and worship. Okay. This is why God says you cannot have two masters, but we someone added into our biology some 200,000 years ago, the worship gene into our human and so now it is genetic for us to worship something. But if you look up at the definition of worship, right? It means basically to admire the authority of. So admire needs to be looked up because you don't think you'd admire your government, but admire means to flow energy and attention to. So you actually do admire. So like when you actually look at all of these words, admire, adore, attend, invest it has nothing to do with whether you like it or not it has everything to do with what you are actually doing and if you're complaining about it or if you hate it you're actually admiring it you're loving it this is why neutral being in that neutral state is where you can go into the zero point and be like okay i'm not manifesting right now i don't have a negative or a positive charge that's creating reality so now I can go, okay, now the awareness can come in. That relationship with higher self that you've been building can come in and it can go, okay, so I must love lack. I must love suffering. I must love narcissists. I must love blah, blah, blah. I must love love. Because the thing is, is you always can figure out what someone loves is what they always talk about or what they always love. And you get these empaths and they start doing these YouTube channels on narcissists and it's all they talk about. So they love it because what you invest in grows, but there's no such thing as lack on the planet. So you're actually in abundance of no money. You're in abundance of no wealth. You're in abundance of dis-ease. You see, so it's like, you've got to look, we've got to study creation better. Because even mainstream, as good as it's becoming manifestation teachings, it's still it's still seeing you as some sort of human victim in this. And really, you are creating everything all the time, 24-7, create, create, create. When you ask, it's given. But see, here's the thing. You don't know you're asking once you look at something. And then the way you define what you're looking at is going to determine what that actually turns into. So if I looked at not having a husband yet as something I love, well, I can now play my character way different in that. I can look at all the things that I actually have right now that come from not being married that I still get to experience that is really awesome. 
And I can fall in love with that, but I can also change my definition. So the, the name of this game moving into this new world, if you guys really want all your spiritual gifts and you want that abundance that's got your name on it, written in heaven and that inheritance that's waiting for you, which is all true, your birthright is, but it has to come through choice. And you have to know what you're choosing. You know what I mean? You've got to know that you are choosing that problem by loving it. Because loving means to nurture. Well, what does nurture mean? Take care of, give energy to, console, look at, feed. You're doing that with your lack. You're feeding it. You're worshiping it. But see, the thing is, is this, this program of the conscious mind being so separate from what's happening down below doesn't see that you're doing that at all and actually doesn't even want to agree with me on this level. It's saying, no, I'm not doing that. But if that's why I had to look up all of those definitions of admire because the occult's got this master language of English that just entraps us, okay? Because we are admiring lack just by looking at it. We are investing in it by talking about it, by by noticing it every day, by actually making that a part of our world. So it's, 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 you can't turn your back on something that you aren't fully aware you're doing. You know, it's like if you've ever tried, one of the ego qualities of unconsciousness is hypocritical behavior, right? Have you ever met someone who was like literally just being a, a complete obvious hypocrite right and they're they're sitting here bitching about something that someone else is doing and you're like oh my gosh i've watched you do that like every day and you're and you're looking at it from a place of awareness but they are completely unconscious to it and they're upset about it and they feel very hurt by something that they've probably done to you and you're like oh my gosh right but see the thing is is they don't know they are not aware of what they are not aware of so we don't know what we don't know until we know it. All right. So this is why I like the, like the end of the year, I really want to bring home this non-duality idea because love is love, right? It, you're, either, you're either putting your currency in things that you actually do want to experience in this life, or you are putting all your currency in what you have don't want to experience in your life. And God doesn't care which one you do because you're still creating. You're creating a destructive life. You're creating a life of no money. You're creating a life of illness. It's still creation. You still get to create. You are still a child of God. You are still creating with every where that your awareness flows or your energy goes. That's what you are investing in. That's what you are becoming. That is what your experience is. So, and what happens is we experience something we don't want. Okay. Then we run away from it. Well, see, now it just gets stronger because what you resist persists. So what we got to do is go towards all of these things. Start looking at it. Okay, I must love you. Let me get to know you. I, I, apparently, I love you. So let's let's like let's get to know each other. Okay, what could I love about you right now from my conscious space? Okay, I could love that. You know what? I, I don't have to have have any big hairy dude snoring at me. Great. I could love that. I mean, it's, it's got to be like simple, silly like that, because ultimately you've got to lighten up, which is the definition of enlightenment here. And the things that we've been trying for and working for and suffering for are really holding us back from, from this game here that we have all this power to play. Okay, so... I want you to look at this self-concept that you guys have been building this year and look at who she is or who she, who he is. And then look at where you are right now in your physical reality. Okay. Like just who your art, who your avatar is today, who the avatar's body is, who the avatar's like reality is that the, the playmates, the playground, the player, just look at her or him, which you've been creating. And now just look back at this, prototype okay because here's the thing you would be living over there if you loved it all right but somehow we still love this so we got to figure out why what's going on here now i want you to think about the distance 
like in in eating habits and livelihood in a money in body you know symmetry in home how many quantum leaps does that feel 10 quantum leaps two quantum leaps one quantum leap because that will show you how much in love you are with lack okay so what I want to do in these next couple of sessions before we wrap this master class is at least if you're not joining us for the, you know, superhuman training is get this right. <laughs> this right here can be a game changer for you. Like just in the last like three days, I feel like my whole life has like spun around eight times and just like recalibrated because now I can never look at anything the same. And it is like letting go of resistance right and left, okay? So no matter how much you say you want to experience something, if you are not experiencing, it is because you are in love. Like, what does in love mean, right? You are in it. You are as it. You are being it, okay? Okay. So this is why we get stuck in abusive relationships. This is why we get stuck in health issues. This is why we get stuck in debt. This is why we get stuck in problems. It's because the more we try to find the solution and figure it out, the more currency we invest into it, the heavier we get, okay? And the heavier we get, the more asleep we get because enlightenment means to lighten up and be light. And density, right, is heavy and asleep. So the more we try to figure this out, the more we fall asleep to the actual awareness of it. All right. Now, it's obvious when you see someone who's like bitching and complaining and you're like, you, they must really just love drama. But see, you don't see yourself as that because you're not bitching and moaning about it. You're seriously trying to find solutions. You're really working on this. You're really like, you're, you know, you've got really great intentions, but guess what? The way universe sees it is no different than the person who loves complaining because looking for a solution when it, when you are the solution, it, it's perceived as love, which is currency. Okay. So I'm going to break here and see if there is any questions before I move on. I have to be done by 1130 because I have a call, but does anybody have any questions on this? Because this is like, I mean, I think you're all getting it, but at the same time, it's just kind of like, whoa, what's happening here, right? Does anybody have anything, any questions? No, there's no stupid questions here. Like, we're just unpacking all of it. <clears throat> Anyone? Okay, I made notes. If you have questions, it's fine. Uh... Okay, so how do we change who we love? right? Okay, moving forward. So if you're like, okay, I don't want to be in love with lack anymore. That's, that's, that's not her. That's not him. That's the old version of me. How do you stop being in love with something? And I, and you know, Neville will say, just stop looking at it. We know that's not going to work for us because the way that human nature is, is curiosity, mystery, um, un, unfulfilled destinies, unrequited love, desires unfulfilled. We are obsessed with those things as humans. And that is what the matrix is built out of, is what we don't have, we are obsessed with not having. That's what fuels their empire, is our very obsession of lack of freedom steals our freedom, okay? That's, that's the game here, is they understand love and they are in love with love. We think that we're here for love and love is gonna save the world. But love is literally a currency of choice and flow. And we're going to need some of both of them sometimes, but we want to be more consistent in growing. You know, one of the scariest things for people to do is change, right? But in order for a seed to become a bloom, it has to completely become destructed. It has to go away from its comfort zone. It has to be completely vulnerable and it has to, it has to go, it has to change its form. So now you might see why you're in love with comfort or you're in love with lack because 
in order to be in love with abundance, you can't be the same you. Repent, Jesus's first words, which means change your effing mind. So that means that like, like that's why I wanted you to think about this version of you, okay? If God said, okay, you wanna be this girl, this guy, you're here, but you can't do this anymore and you can't think this anymore and you can't feel that anymore. And you can't go here anymore. And blah, 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 right? You're gonna be like, oh, okay, that, that is going to be uncomfortable because people think that they can just affirm their way here, but it is going to be an embodiment. All right. So the number one thing that I said at the beginning of the year, that was going to be one of our downfalls with abundance, creating abundance is that we are too abundant in what? Okay. So what are you too abundant in? That is where all of your love's been going. That's where you've invested in some crappy stock, okay? So you look at it like someone fed you like a lie about this company. This actually happened to my girlfriend, like during COVID, like all these companies popped up and like, oh, well, let me invest some money for you. And they invested their life savings into this like startup something. And then it turned out to be just a complete fraud. But I, I think like she literally left my class to go figure out how to fix this. They were calling lawyers. So all they were doing is investing more lack into losing their money, more lack into it. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, looking at it from that perspective, that seemed obvious, but like what I'm doing doesn't seem that obvious, you see, because that's like a big focal point. But we like, usually it is the thing that we start to experience in lack that we get all of our energy towards. Or or a lot of denial energy. See, the thing about humans is they don't understand that they're still giving energy to what they are covering up. But it takes a lot of energy to hold down a cork underwater, right? That's what happens when you are hiding or denying something. Okay, and I've done this a lot where I'm like, oh, it'll just go away. It'll take care of itself on its own. It does not. Because now... I have to love sitting on that cork, which means I can't go anywhere else. Otherwise, this is going to pop up, right? Unless I just let it pop up and be like, I must love this. So you have to see if your investment is going towards sitting on that cork to hide something or constantly trying to find a solution of it, still currency, right? You're still using all your energy. And then at, at the end of the day, you're exhausted and you really didn't do very much because you were literally using all of your currency to either hold something away from you or to try to figure out how to get away from it. But it's it's all of your energy and focus. So it looks like it is love because that's all you actually are. So like the next time you look at the electricity running through your house, that's going to this and this and this and this and this, that's love. And it's not bad or good, okay? But because there is density on this planet, there is a spirit of death and decay and there's a spirit of life and that helps us expand. Because if we didn't die and go into a different reality, we would never be able to change, which is good. See, this is where we're gonna use the spirit of death, okay? And we're gonna use the spirit of life and we're gonna use the spirit, but we're not gonna get stuck there, okay? Because you can't just be one or the other. The way that the, the, the simulation is created is, is that you're going to use both. But you're not going to judge whether one thing is good or not. And you're not going to get stuck on one of them. Because you can't just out-breath. <laughs> That's like grow. And you can't just in-breath, right? You, you have to do both. So us learning how to work in non-duality where the spirit of death is essential, right? For decaying and destroying something so it can rebirth. I mean, look at the seasons of the planet. She is constantly going through a death and rebirth phase to expand. She wouldn't be able to expand without that contraction. The mother would not be able to open up her cervix 10 if she didn't contract first. If you've ever been holding a rope and it's too tight, you say, hey, give me some slack, right? Because you need that contraction and expansion 
in order to become something new. But what happens with us is because we have the worship gene and we are focused and obsessed on lack, okay, that we are not going through that natural process. Like, oh, I could lose that. Because one of the things I'm going to teach you guys next year is one of the most aggressive ways that the occult manifests is through sacrifice. Now, see, you see the word sacrifice like, oh, I'll give up my time for money. They see sacrifice like, give me a lamb, give me a sheep. So same word. And you're going to need to understand it as a creator. Because what we have to sacrifice is our old self, is our old belief is our old love. But the thing is, is when you are in scarcity, you have a tendency to hoard things that you love. You hoard things that you're going to need, hoard things that might run out. Because you don't believe if you let go of it, that there's going to be something else there. And that might be why you love lack. You're going to have to figure this out. Okay. Because it's not going to be the same for everybody else. Like, like I don't, I, I'm not in love with being sick. Because that does not benefit me in any kind of way at all. But if I was a sick kid and that's how I bonded with my mom, maybe I would love being sick. Or maybe I got out of chores or, or maybe someone gave me attention. Remember, attention, when you were a child, what got you attention? What got you attention as a child has so much more to, to your personality than you have any idea of. Even if it was negative attention. Because attention, especially for feminine energy, that is one of our, our, like our basic needs is attention. All right. And it doesn't matter if it's good or bad in the eyes of non-duality. Okay. So like, yeah, like that's essential. So what got you attention as a child, positive or negative, that is going to be who you built your entire persona out of. Because you want more of that because that's what you came for. You came for the attention. You came for the, you came to put your attention on and you came to have attention on you. Look what I'm becoming. Look at me. I'm changing. I'm growing. Look at that. I'm manifesting. I'm changing. I'm growing. Look at what I can do, right? So like the way that the subconscious mind sees this universe is so freaking different than the way your conscious awareness sees it. And that's the disconnect, is that it is looking at it as everything is love and everything is energy. And anything you look at, anything that got you, you know, protects you, anything that got you love, anything that makes you feel safe, you're going to be in love with that. So maybe not being mega rich keeps you safe okay maybe not having so much house and cars you don't want that responsibility because you had to clean your room all the time and you didn't want that big of a room or i don't know what your story is you're gonna have to reflect it. and i know you've done a lot of shadow work so this is just a different spectrum of looking down at it and and if you've done a lot of like child work or inner work this will be so easy because i found this joyful i really did like when i sat with this i was like oh this is awesome <laughs> because it wasn't like oh god I, I just was like i didn't know what i didn't know i didn't know even though i knew that there's only love in this universe and i've taught this before and i you know it's like when you look at something and decide whether it's bad or good that's when you give your conscious definition of it and it's very different in the spell casting of the subconscious understanding of it, right? So the English language is designed to entrap you into scarcity. Everything about it. It is the, the spirit of death created that language. The spirit of death. I mean, good morning. Hello, morn, right? So if you start like looking at all these words, like, so, okay, I looked at the word submit, right? So one of the things that we're terrified to do is submit because we don't want to be controlled by authority, but it is the very thing that once you start to get over in 5D, you're going to have to learn real quick that if you want to be in that inheritance as abundance, you're going to have to submit. You're going to have to face that. So if you have authority issues in your subconscious mind, you're going to be in love with being dominant and control. Now look at like submitting your resume. Submit. 
it basically means like you're giving authority over you. So our entire world is created to, well, our, our English language. And isn't it interesting that the one language that is universal is English. The whole planet knows English. And the whole planet knows the dollar. So we are the melting pot of this new, whatever they're building. Okay. It's the new Jerusalem. If you look in the middle of that word, it's USA. That's their prophecy. Our prophecy is that we're building a kingdom of heaven. You know, like, but we have to understand that we are creators just like Christ. And if we don't realize that we can walk on water and we can heal sick and raise the dead and turn fish, you know, into billions or millions, it is because we are in love with not doing it. Why would I be in love with not doing that? I don't know. I have, see, this is where the investigation comes. So you're going to have to investigate why the heck you would be in love with not having your spiritual gifts. Well, I I can't tell you how many sessions I've had over the last 12 years. And every everybody that meets me, we're all a vibrational match. So we're all gifted on some levels. And why some of those gifts won't come out for you is because you are in love with not having it. You got to figure out when you fell in love with not having it. Because maybe you had it and it didn't work out so good for you. And so you fell in love with not having it. And now you're sitting on that cork. And that might be draining 20% of your energy. And you're like, I wish I was clairvoyance. And you're literally sitting on the cork, cork of clairvoyance because you did hear something when you were a kid and it scared the crap out of you. See, so you've got to figure out because every human has all of the gifts. It's not like, oh, I have this and you have that. No, we all have everything. We're made in the image of God. We have the womb, okay? They have more density. We have we're fourth dimension creation. They're third dimensional creation, masculine. We have the we're the woo man. We're the woman. We bring the spirit through. We're built to receive. They are built to provide, to give. Okay. And so when we are not in our own, we're not in our correct gender, when we're not in our correct mind, and when we do not understand that love is love then we are just people who are using a lot of energy to try to manifest. Like we're generators and we're just putting all this energy on lack, which fuels the empire. So the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is within you. And those of you who are about to join this next class are going to find out why very quickly, because you access the Christ within your body and that's basically your kundalini and once you have brought the consciousness of crown into the root you are fully realized which means your gifts are not trapped in your root right your creative abilities are not trapped in your sacral because everything is a flow that's what 5d is it's flow it's a flow state and it the the natural frequency of a human being is joy. That is your natural frequency. So when we feel joy next time, set your alarm clock. Notice what thought comes up. Because the thing is, is if you feel joy too long, you're going to have to not love not being in joy. So this is this is like some deep work this week. We'll see where you guys are next week. And uh, um, if we need to do some body work or something like that, that's like all we're going to do today in the fellowship class because I've already been kind of working with them on the alchemy. Uh, but th those of you who are joining next year, I would recommend sooner than later because I'm already going to put, the some of you guys are in January and you might be having your full moon this month. And so you're better off having these videos now even if you don't utilize this energy okay because the thing about creating reality here is not that we're going back to astrology and getting all into that no but what we're looking at is, is we're looking at the human design and we're looking at the earth design and we're looking at our time frame for 5d okay and whether you choose to jump there or not with me like now or next year it doesn't matter because you're still go you're not going to have to go all the way into zero 
Like the only way that you would have to go into that AI soul-based world is if you were just so obsessed with it, if you loved it so much. If that's all you're studying right now, that's because you're choosing it. Whatever you look at, you're choosing. Whatever you invest in, you love. Okay? We just have to stop investing in lack if that's not what we want to be in love with anymore. All right? Read mine. Um, I have it in the document. I'm, I'm going to put this on YouTube. So you guys are at 50% off if you've done a master class before. If you've done a master class with me before, you guys get 50% off. Because this is probably, like I said, this one's going to be my last one. But I thought I was going to be doing this year by myself. And that is not kingdom energy. Kingdom energy is unity and community and fellowship and togetherness. I was like, Ugh. so that's why I'm not going to put anything on YouTube because it's it's not going to be, it's not going to be appropriate for people who are just going to bump into it, right? Because it, it, they're not going to want to catch some of these classes <laughs> because we're going to be talking about everything, the blood, you know, the creation, the death, the life, the, all of the, all of it. So yeah, and I, I put the document in you guys' um, little whatever it's called. So, yeah, if you have any questions for me, reach out and ask me that. But otherwise, I already built a new Facebook group for the new year. And already put I'm putting the two classes in today because we're already in January. So, although we have this class until the 24th, um, that class I'm already like... The only reason I'm jumping ahead is because of the time clock. Okay? Just because of... I, I decided... You just want to be in that energy for yourself because it's your going to be your magic time to either set the intention for next year or maybe you're ready this year. You'll see. You'll see. That's all I'm going to say. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me. Find out what you're in love with. And I'm going to tell you one of your best power moves right now is I must love this. I must love it. Next time it comes up. Oh, I, I must love this. You change the charge instead of right now you're in the other love. See, every time it goes wrong, you go into the death love. But if you were aware of it, you could go, I must love this. And now you're in abundance love. And eventually, because you're lightening up and you're, put, you're putting the truth and you're letting go of resistance, just saying that over every time it happens, I must love this. I must love it. And then actually questioning yourself, right? And then finding where it is in the body. Okay, it isn't about casting it out and all this. You can, but the thing is, is if you do that from a place of resistance, you're not doing nothing. You're better off letting go of all the resistance, full radical acceptance, analyzing what it is that you are investing in, looking at what you're trying to do, look at the solutions you're searching for. Because like, I've heard this for literally 20 years. The solution is in the problem. The solution is in the problem. That's so frustrating, right? The cure is in curiosity. The cure is in curiosity. You're like, right? And it's so true. When you look at it as all you are is love, all you are is abundance, all you are is creator. That's what you need to know moving into next year. Okay? Hugh man is light man. You are God man, God woo man. And you are literally in the same energy as Jesus, but you are choosing lack. Okay? You literally have all the same abilities because it's like what he sees is how much energy we spend not having. And we look at how easy it is for him to just materialize something, but he's in love with it being easy and we are in love with it being hard. That is the only difference. There's some biological changes that happen too, but you can't be in resistance and experience that anyways. So the biological changes are going to happen when you decide what you want to be in love with moving forward. Okay. And of course, just that right there, it's going to change your whole spectrum. Like literally I've had the most blissful last three days, even though that thing that might still be there is there. It doesn't feel at all the same way now. Like it feels completely different and I'm like laughing about it you know and part of my ego is like oh, why are we so thick right like why have we not decided this was going to be easier e earlier but you know that's what we are that's we're in love with it being hard 
you know, we're in love with it being, you know, confusing. <laughs> we're in love with trying to figure out how to do it. Because all we have to do is decide that it's easy and that it's that it's for you and that you don't need to do anything to earn it. And that's that's all you're going to accept. But again, you have to blow the charge first. You have to balance the energy. And then you have to redirect that love in the opposite spectrum and then start building that. Because you already have built that self-concept, right? But it's neutralizing and it's basically just kind of like, you know, dropping out. Or you're manifesting the, the opposite. That happens too. Because the, the opposite happens and guess where all of our energy goes to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I got to run. So I'll see you guys either at one o'clock or next week. All right. Bye guys.